Good to know you're still with us. The police have dispensed a procession of Islamic Movement of Nigeria members around Wuse Market in Abuja. The policemen reportedly fired gas canisters and gunshots into the air, forcing the Shiites and passerbys to scamper for safety. The Shiites planned to hold a nationwide procession on Saturday in commemoration of their annual uh, trek, traditional trek, sparking fears of another confrontation with security operatives. But come to think of it, whatever happened to Shiite leader Ibrahim El Zagzaki? We have in the studio political analyst Ugochuki Kako. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. And of course, still from the last session, we have Obi Ejebo, legal practitioner. Thank nice you very much for staying with us. Okay, they are going on a procession. They were warned not to do so. And of course, we have the issue of their prescription. Should they be embarking on any sort of public movement at this time? Well, uh, the IG came out a couple of days back to say that uh, the IMM, that the shared group, they are free to protest. And uh, uh, according to our constitution, the constitution, the 1999 uh, constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, uh, I think I think I think it's allowed people to protest to take it to demand for something to go out and seek for it. Uh, uh, of recent, you've seen a situation where you have to say collect a police report, collect that and that before you go and protest. But. Uh, People have right to association. People have right to come out and say and demand for something. Quickly, which is for, 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 for the avoidance of doubts, yes. because even when I read it, it was a bit um, skewed for me. Okay. I couldn't understand it. What is the difference between Shiites and the IMN? Because the IG of police is saying that IMN is, it is the organization that was prescribed. So can you maybe shed a little light on this? Well, I think both, I think both of them are... Basically, the same thing to me. I am that's the, the Islamic movement of Nigeria and the Shiite. And uh, I, I think I am is, is a body that houses that houses uh, that houses them are, are together. And uh, in in Islam, you have you have the Sunni, you have the Shiite, which is which means like the basic uh, the difference between the, uh, the main uh, Islamic group in Nigeria. You have the Sunni, you have the Shiite. So I, I think, it, but for me, from my own understanding, from what Mr. Adamu is saying, that's it, that's the IG saying, okay, uh, the Shiite as a group, uh, let's say as a Muslim group are not banned from doing anything. Like, they're not banned from protesting and doing anything. And we've seen, this, we've seen that uh, the, the IMM, a lot of them are part of uh, 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 shite, uh, shite, uh, uh, shite members. So, uh, these, so, so I think that's just, that's just the difference. That's, that's what a lot of people don't get, especially in Nigeria, where not all, not all uh, Muslims in the country belong to one group. The same way you have different uh, groups in the Christianity, you have these, these people belong to this particular sect in Pentecostal movement. Or in the, so that, that is just the difference between the both of them. Let's bring you in. Okay. Your, your thoughts. Uh, from the legal perspective, they are prescribed. And there's this terminology difference, Shiites and IMM. We always refer to them as IMM, also known as Shiites. So what's the distinction in your opinion? Shiite is a religious, is a religious group. If they prescribe Shiite, it will, if they prescribe Shiite, what they're saying is the other sect of um, Islam is banned, which should be more volatile. But if they prescribe the body, the umbrella which they're using to make, um, to demands. cause trouble, to co make demands, then that is understandable. It's, a, it's, a, it's an NGO, it's a group that the government is finding. So they are working, they are trying to avoid the religious tag, toga on it. That's my take. Okay, now that we've cleared that up, what, what, do you have any concerns about the police using tear gas and what else, canisters to disperse them? Maybe, wouldn't it have been better to use maybe water cannons or stuff? Is that for me? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think uh, Nigeria police, uh, they, they've proven themselves over a long period of time not to understand how things are supposed to work uh, in a civilized setting, especially in the democracy in 20, uh, 2019, 21st century. So I'm not surprised that they will go all out to use uh, tear gas and, uh, you know, and sometimes you see them brandishing their, their weapons, which are supposed to use in a war fund, right? I don't understand why you're using an AK-47 in, in front of a private citizen that just, that just want to demand for things to be better and just to ask questions as, as an active citizen. So it doesn't make sense. But the truth is that uh, we keep saying this all the time, but our, our, police, our police institutions are not trying to understand that this is not acceptable across the world. This is not acceptable. We've seen protesters across, uh, across the world from Hong Kong, currently in Lebanon, and the rest of them. People are free to protest, all right? Sometimes even the, even the police in different parts of the world, 
are there to make sure that the people that are protesting have peace, that, that, that they, behave, they behave themselves very, very well. They're not there to inflict pain on them, to, uh, to, to use tear gas to disperse them, because at the moment, these people are not doing anything. They're not constituting harm to anybody. They're not constituting harm. They're not constituting bodily harm, or they're not trying to offend or do anything that the state does not allow. So uh, I think it's just sad that we have a police that doesn't understand that protest should is part of democracy, and protest should be allowed in a democratic setting. So our police think that anybody that wants to protest in a civilian state like this wants to overthrow the government. And I think that is sad. And that is, um, it shows that uh, our the 19 years progress we've made in democracy, uh, that democratic culture has not eaten deep, has, has, not, go, has not gone deep into, into the police system and the people that control their affair over there. Well, to, to, to be fair on the part of the police, they did issue a warning that that procession should not hold, right? Well, you're saying there should have been a better approach. Now, the group says they're going to go on a procession. Tomorrow is the D-Day. Mm -hmm. It's going to be like nationwide um, on Saturday. Do you see the police being able to disperse this crowd like they did the Abuja case? This, this is going to be across the country. First of all, the police does not have the manpower. They can only handle select places. But can we look at the other side of the coin? What of if these people come on process and the police walk side by side with them? and allows them to have a peaceful procession. Will they still have that same gusto to vent and to cause me? The police will be there escorting them and just protecting them. Do you understand? That, that, would, that would make a whole lot of sense, really. Do you, do you have any objection to that? You see, like I always say when I come here, I hope it's not a strategy. And I've been in this country for the last how many years? And I'm like, this is my home, this is my country, this is my city. So uh, if the Nigeria police that I'm, I'm used to, the ones that I understand, the ones that I read about on the internet, they are not the ones that will give you that privilege. And it's sad because we, we say it here. Uh, over the week, we saw, we, saw, we, saw, we, saw, we saw a story that the, the guy that was shot, uh, the police, uh, wherever, said that nothing, nothing, not the guy, the people that did that did nothing wrong. So, is this same police? Remember that the last time they had a clash in Abuja, all right? Someone died, and that's when when, when they killed uh, when uh, they uh, killed suddenly the officer. The, an officer died, and the the young reporter from Channel TV mm. passed uh, as well. So, it's just sad because at the end of the day, I, I, I don't think that our police has uh, that they understand. Uh, our 21st century, how to manage crises like this or issues like this. Everything is not force. Everything is not, everything is not fighting that you're trying to do things. No, that is not how you do things. And also, most importantly, why we're having this issue again. We keep talking about this child movement uh, are being prescribed, the, the procession and the rest of them, because we have an administration in Abuja, in Asura, calling them, that don't understand respect for the rule of law. But if things have been done rightly as it's supposed to, to have been done over a long period of time, we won't be having these issues. But a court has issued a ruling that this IMN has been prescribed. Let's look at it from another angle. Shouldn't they, should they be issuing statements? Because the president of the media forum of the IMN is insisting that they are going to have that procession tomorrow. In spite of the police saying, do not go on that procession, he's also saying, uh, dispelling rather, concerns that the protest is going to turn violent. Should he be making statements at this time, considering that they are a prescribed group? The, it's obvious that they want a showdown. It's in their best interest to have a showdown, to portray the government in bad light. And that's what they intend doing. And the proscribed group, what they should have done is to go to court and um, tackle the validity of that prescription. And then if they can lift the val if they can dispel it, then they'll go on. But let's wait and see what happens. One quick argument that they present is that in all the cases that the federal government has prosecuted against them, most of them, the major cases, have been dismissed by the court. You know, Isn't that some sort of evidence that um, something is not right? In addition to what... Uh, what she said, uh, I, I, like uh, the thing is this: what the spokesperson is saying, the spokesperson of IM is saying, is is uncalled for. It's not acceptable, right? You can't just come out openly to threaten violence or mayhem on the people because you feel that you have a right. No, he's he is dispelling fears that the procession is going to turn violent. He says it's an annual procession that they hold, but, so he doesn't want people to like like, like we said earlier. You see. IMN, I -M -N, the, the Islamic movement in Nigeria, has been proscribed. That is what the law says, all right? 
And I had to make a decision between the, sh uh, the Shiites and the Sunni, all right? And that's what, me, uh, what she said, that the reason why government has not, cannot do that, because if you do that, you're, you're trying to create a religious uh, conflict and a religious tension between both sides of the Islamic faith in the country. So what they are trying to do is to say, okay, the leadership, the people that, the people that are in charge of these people as a group, all right, what you guys have done so far, we're not cool with it, all right? So because of that, we've prescribed you. So if I am... am is trying to lead that movement tomorrow, that protest tomorrow. It's not a good one. It doesn't all go well for them because already they, as, as a group, has been prescribed. All right. So, and the thing is this: why in a court, whether if the government is wrong or right, the only people that have the the, the right to settle everything is a competent court of jurisdiction. So, what do you do is to go back to a court and ask the court to quash that prescription. So, and if the court hasn't done that, if shite members decide on their own that they want to go and protest, I think that is lawful and that is in order because the court has not proscribed them. That's it, that, 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 that is, is a very, is a very, it's, it's a play is, is, is a, is a, is, is very trickish, but that is what it is at, at, at the moment. Because if the court say, don't do this, there is a court, there is a standing order that says, don't do this, all right? And if you're going out against a court order to do so, I think it's in the contempt of the court. Mm. And it doesn't all go well for you because I didn't so know. wouldn't it be wise for them to do their procession as Shiites? Because if if they go ahead to do it as I am, and, and that's what the IG is saying that they do not recognize the government of Nigeria, so that would be an act of terrorism mm -hmm. on their part. Mm -hmm. So wouldn't they be wise to go as a group of Shiites commemorating an annual event? A group of Shiites. When you look at these Shiites, you could see that they're well. They are to show together. They are not just any group that anybody will take for granted. They are together. It's, you see, they wear, they wear uniforms and they are they are so together. So for I understand what the IG is saying, but how do you now say, okay, I am a Shiite, I'm not IMNL, when it's the same bunch of people? That's what I'm asking. Couldn't, couldn't they just for the uh, uh, so that they can do what they Except need to do if they know that it's not going to be violent? The Shiite movement. I don't know if Shiites have the movement. Except if they have a banner and say Shiite movement of Nigeria or whatever. I, 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 think, I think the, the whole thing started because of the issue with El Zaki. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. he is the leader of IMM, IM, IMM in Nigeria with the wife and every other people that work, the people that work with him. In terms of the organizational structure. So I, I think what the state is saying, that's Nigeria, all right? I'm trying to, I'm not trying to play the devil's advocate, but what we're seeing is that the state is saying that I am, um, the leadership, all right, will have an issue with them because of uh, they don't recognize yeah. Nigeria and the rest of that. Yeah, I don't, uh, it doesn't make sense to me, all right? But because of the fact that the state has gone to court and got a prostitution order against these people, we we'll still have to respect that. And if IMM has an issue with it, what they should do is to still go to go back, maybe at a high court or an appeal court, a spring court, whatever, to quash that ruling. Right? Because you don't fight fire with fire. It does, it, it don't do that anywhere. So if there is an issue and you feel that the government is taking for granted that the, what the government has done is against you, as against, uh, is against your fundamental human right to worship, uh, you know, to do things that you're supposed to do, to as, uh, association and the rest of them, what you should do is not to go and fight government one on one. Because in doing that, people die. In doing that, people get hurt. We've seen that happen the last time. All right? just, you saw a young couple that just finished that was serving, lost his life because of this same issue. So a policeman that lost his life. So it doesn't help anybody. Right? Like you said, if anything happens, they place to their own advantage. Page, right? It shows that this government doesn't doesn't respect uh, doesn't respect the sanctity of human life and the rest of them. But also, all right, sometimes you need to understand that at the end of the day, for me, I strongly believe in democracy. Negotiation and dialogue is key. And at this point, if shite member as a group, they have not been proscribed, so they have liberty to pro to, to go across the country to say this is our issues, uh, these are the things I want people to the world to hear. That is in order. But for the IM as a group, that the leadership structure, I think that is where the issue is. If the state is saying we don't don't want you to be part of this, don't want you to do this thing, then go to a court. Talking about leadership issue, before we wrap up this conversation, the El Zaki situation, mm. there was a time, uh, the, the whole thing we heard in the news was he's almost dying, he has lead in his system, and he has to go to hospital. Now, that movement was facilitated after a lot of public outcry and sympathy went, and then he is back. Since then, We've not heard much about him. What is your take? Whatever happened with the leader? Now the call has reverted to free El Zagzaki and everyone that is being held captive. No longer his health situation. We did not hear that he has gone back to the hospital and he is better now. Is that for me? 
Yes. <laughs> well, it's, um, it was all from, from what we have seen. It was all a charade. Maybe the, the trip was not, did not talk, work out the way he intended it to be. So he's back. That card has been played, played and it was won. Because if he was really sick, he would go for treatment. And he sees that his doctor f flies with him and his doctor is there. So if he was really sick. But, and on the other hand, you know when somebody's in detention, the best way to get the person out of detention is to fly a car that the person is almost at the point of death. <laughs> Your quick thoughts. Well, so me, I, I think I, I disagree. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to call it a, a, a charade or anything else. We, we've seen so far, all right, under this administration for the last four years, we've seen uh, uh, Abiri Jones, the journalist that has been held, the DSS has held him for years. Uh, we've seen what has happened with Shawore. We've seen what has happened with the other guy. Other, other guys that have been held in captive across the country because uh, they're asking for one or two things, which is, in, which is in accordance with the Constitution. So my issue is this, that he's held where people don't get to see him. Right? He doesn't have access to uh, people who can't go and see him because at the end of this, uh, somebody from the DSS or from the Ministry of Information can come and tell us, like a Lai Mohammed, who come and lie to us and tell us that this guy is fine. Whereas something different might be happening to but him. But so, no, I don't get your argument. No, to be honest. Honest. We're no, out of no, time. No, my, but, argument, my, argument, yeah. my argument is that we don't know what is happening to this guy. And because he's sick, and because the court has said free him and state has held him in contempt of the court. On it's this, not about freeing him now. I'm asking about his health situation. Because we don't know, because there's no information. Who he is feeding us? He has a Lawyer. And not, no, lawyer nobody, nobody has been said the same, the lawyer the same lawyer, should be able to talk. Femi Falana that Femi Falana, the same Femi Falana that that so far has not been able to get uh, what's his name Shore out of out of uh, the state custody that the state denied receiving the letter from the court. So we need to understand that to an extent. Yeah, even the fact that I understand this this is beyond is beyond is beyond politics. And I, I so we are dealing with people that don't understand the sanctity of human life and don't, do not respect the constitution. So in issues like this, I would rather stand with the Abiri Jones, the Shawere, and the Exaxaki till they till they, till they learn how to respect what court said and free these guys. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts. Always a delight to have you thank here. You thank you for having us. All right, and thank you for staying with us. But we're not done yet. We're just going a short break for a plus package, and when we return, I'll give you my take. Please stay with us. The People's Democratic Party in Akwa Ibom State has debunked reports in some sections of the media suggesting that Governor Udom Emmanuel and the PDP have adopted a certain aspirant for the 2023 governorship election. The State Publicity Secretary of the party, Barista Ini Ememo Bong, presented the party's position at a press conference in Uyo, the state capital. Our attention as a party has been attracted by various articles online and in traditional media suggesting that the governor, Udom Emmanuel, and the party headed by Obon Polipo has either adopted, endorsed, encouraged, or prefers an aspirant in the build-up to the 2023 governorship elections. We wish to state for the records that as a party, the discussion of 2023 is still very unripe and immature at this moment, as the second term of the governor, Udom Emmanuel administration is yet to even reach a year we urge those trying to stimulate the commencement of the 2023 cycle to instead channel their energies in collaborating with the current administration in the attainment of its completion agenda. To our jurisprudence. To be honest, I welcome any move, any effort to rebrand the Nigerian image. And EFCC saying it is committed to rehabilitating Yahoo Yahoo boys, uh, the guys that engage in internet fraud as we know them. If not just another fa uh, fanning, rather, comment meant to distract or assuage growing concerns among Nigerians, it's most welcome, in my opinion. As with everything Nigeria, though, I worry as to the will to see it through and how well thought out for the long-term plans would be. I would much rather the government take the chunk of the responsibility for this one, though for there are more issues to be addressed that would be fundamental to a comprehensive rehabilitation and these lies squarely at the feet of the government. Among them is to create the right economic environment for young people to thrive and explore their creativity in a good way, one that is complementary to the nation's battered image. Whatever strategy we choose to adopt, the fact remains that money and material things for most youths 
a very necessary motivation for doing many things, good or bad. Let's encourage them to do good. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again on Monday. Have a lovely weekend.